Hi teachers, Ehung and I really like a thing that we call blob. Let me show you how it works. Here's something that should be familiar to an Algebra 2 trig student. Blob is an idea that makes complex algebra look less intimidating and feel more manageable. And here's how it works. Step one is we notice there's a repeated expression in here. Let's treat that expression that happens several times like it's a single unit, blob. Um, and that makes sense because at the end of the day, what's inside here is the output of the sine function, which is going to be some number. So of course you can manipulate it like it's a number. Um, but the idea is if you're thinking about that as a unit, it doesn't matter what's in there. So you can just think about this as blob squared plus blob minus two equals zero. Well, that looks a lot better. Some students really like blob. It makes it feel comfortable and easy. Um, other students who really like mathematical formalism prefer what the mathematicians do, which is defining a variable, let p equal that business up there, and then you can say p squared plus p minus 2 um, because they feel uncomfortable factoring blob. Either way, um, the point is this repeated structure you can define away, and now it's easy to factor. So we know that either p is 1 or p is negative 2 using the zero product property. Um, but now you substitute it back in. So sine of the business is 1 or sine of the business is negative 2. And they can think about what would this part even mean? Maybe there's not a solution there. And what would this part even mean? And they can continue solving from there. So that's one situation in which you might use blob. Um, here's how we used blob in my calculus class the other day. The students had this problem. y equals 1 minus y, sorry, y over 1 minus y equals c times e to the rt. All right, so they were supposed to solve for y. Here's what most of them did. Most of them started by multiplying through by 1 minus y. And then they were thinking, OK, I'm going to distribute here. And so they started to distribute. And right around here, they reached their kind of complaining, quitting threshold. And they thought, oh, this is looking gross. And they kind of lost the thread of what was even happening. So blob can help in this situation as well. Um, it doesn't really get gross until down in here. So like, what's the repeated expression? It's this thing. So if we think we got y equals blob minus y times blob, oops. OK, that looks much easier. What am I trying to do? All right, I'm trying to isolate y. So we'll add y times blob. So that gives us y plus y blob equals blob. Factor out the y equals blob. So now y equals blob over 1 plus blob. Um, what was blob? All right, it was this business. So we got c times e to the rt over 1 plus c times e to the rt. So blob is very convenient for just rapidly manipulating gross formulas, which is uh, what happens a lot in calculus. So it's a really important skill to build up in the earlier grades to make kids understand that when they see something that looks really complicated and gross, um, they shouldn't feel intimidated, and they especially shouldn't give up. There are tricks that you can use, and blob is one of the ones that often helps.